It's been one of the most surreal weeks in rugby league history. Coronavirus forcing changes to our game and, of course, the world. Today on Inside the NRL, we speak to Todd Greenberg. Our team goes into Warriors camp to find out how the New Zealand-based squad are dealing with the competition changes. We speak to Damian Cook, Moses Embai and Alex Glenn, who give us their thoughts on how the universal virus outbreak is affecting rugby league. But first, let's take a look at how the situation stands after round one. put some steps in place immediately for this weekend to ensure that we put the players first. It has been recommended to us that uh, we move to a position by Monday where we will be advising against organised, non-essential gatherings of persons of 500 people or greater from Monday. And in simple terms, all NRL games in round one will continue to proceed as planned. In round two, our games will continue to proceed, albeit with our stadiums will be closed to fans. We were advised by the New Zealand government of the restrictions placed on anyone entering New Zealand after midnight tomorrow night. But obviously that's going to create some significant challenges for opposing teams to come to New Zealand. We do need a plan B and we probably need to enact it sooner than later. I can't stress enough that our game has never faced a challenge like this. It could have catastrophic effects on us moving forward. Yeah, well, our chairman, Peter Volandis, has labelled the uh, coronavirus situation as catastrophic. We have not seen something like this in our game, uh, arguably since the Super League that was so disruptive. Gents, Michael Chamis, Jamie Soward, it's something that is just, we have to take seriously. The health and the financial implications are just huge, aren't they? Well, they are, and, and the game cannot afford to stop playing. Reality is they may have to stop playing, which is going to cause a lot of concern for players who rely on the income from the broadcasters, which won't come in if we stop playing games. So there are a lot of concerned people, not only that are playing the game, but are linked to the game directly and indirectly, as we've spoken about before. So yeah, it's a sort of a watch and see what happens. But as you pointed out, Kate, there's a far greater importance at the moment with what's going on in the world. And rugby league's probably the bottom of that list. Yeah. And the environment's just changing hour by hour, day by day. So it's hard to even get a read on what's happening post round two. Uh, last week, we didn't even mention coronavirus. <laughs> and here we are seven days later, and we're going to be playing round two in front of stadiums with no crowds. Jamie, do you think round two should and can still go ahead? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, the players, you know, if you ask the players, I know Cameron Smith's come out and said that he would like the competition to go on hold, but, you know, most of the players want the competition to go ahead. And, you know, watching Peter Volandi speak yesterday, I was actually really proud that we had someone come out and, and not only tell it how it is, but also give an insight as to why we need the game to keep going. And I understand there's an element of family and, and friends and, you know, grandparents and all that kind of stuff with, you know, newborns and all that, but... The other side of it is that the players, sometimes the players, rely, well, a lot of the players rely on this, you know, some aren't all earning the big money at the top end, so the other guys are relying on the game to go ahead. So I was just happy yesterday with how Peter Volandis handled it. I think that we go ahead as far as we can. If someone tests positive to corona, we are going to stop the, the competition like they did in the NBA. Yeah, there is one player, Bronson Sherry, who did think that he was going to test positive. We will catch up with him a little later in the show. But, Michael, we need to probably get back to the financial implications and what it means for the game. Um, how do we get a read on this? And do you think Todd and, and Peter are doing what they can for the NRL as far as it goes? Well, Jamie touched on Peter Volandis, who's copped a little bit of heat for what he came out and said yesterday, putting pressure on the government to compensate the game for what it's about to go through, no doubt. And, look, it did come across, across bullish, but to be honest, you can understand the situation. It's not his job to save the world. It's his job to make sure he saves rugby league. And rugby league's in a position right now where, as he said, it's catastrophic. We could have teams crippled by the situation. We could be losing teams. There couldn't be a competition going forward. Forget about postponing games. We may not have a competition next year. Uh, so I understand the need to, to pressure government for more money. And it, regardless of how it came across, that's his job. Is that how scary it is? You, you mentioned not having a game next year. Is that how serious we are taking this? Well, it depends how long we're out for. And that's, there's, there's plan A, B, C and D, E, F, G. They're all being worked <laughs> out by the NRL at the moment. But if we don't play for the rest of the year, that's a lot of money. The broadcaster's putting close to $400 million a year into the game that we won't get. So that's the players' wages gone. That's the, comp the, the clubs rely on the NRL's $13 million a year in grants to survive. They won't get that. A and we're talking about dire consequences. So the threat is real, and I don't want to sound like a hypochondriac, but the reality is rugby league's in danger, but the world's in danger, and you just got to try and balance where we sit on that. And um, Peter Volandis 
a bit of pressure to the government about trying to save the game. Todd Greenberg did mention that they've already rolled out $6 million between the 16 clubs. Probably doesn't go a long way. But what about, um, he also mentioned um, having a look at that clause in the CBA and possibly talking to players to take a pay cut. Well, they might have, to take, might have to take a pay cut if they don't play as many games as they originally scheduled to. If, if the competition becomes a shortened version at the end of the year where we only play 12 or 16 weeks, then players aren't going to get paid the full amount. That's the reality is they're going to have to sit out a little bit of time and not get their full amount because the broadcasters, and rightly so, aren't going to pay for a product that isn't coming forward. And they've got to pay their own bills. And uh, would, so le can... would less games provide more people watching on TV, though? Like if they can't go, surely they'd get that in viewership and, and all that, the sponsors. Well, you'd like imagine that. there'd be a spike per game, but there won't be as many games to supply the fans. So you need to, to consider that. If it's only a 16 round competition, then you've missed out on the revenue for eight rounds. So an Origin series as well, do you move the Origin series to the end of the year? Because 20% of the game's income comes from Origin. If you miss that period at the middle of the year and you don't play it, you've got to fit it in somewhere. And we, we could get to a point where we play Origin at the end of the year. We will talk about State of Origin at the end of the year, but first I want to hear Luke Curie's reaction to taking a pay cut a little earlier today. We haven't spoken about things like that, but I reckon if it got down to the point, there would definitely be um, discussions and things like that. People have family and mortgages and stuff like that. They're going to have to um, you know, try and get by. So. I don't think anything is out of the out of the question in terms of, of that stuff. So. so basically accepting that if the NRL have to go to that last resort of talking to players, he would be happy to do that. Jamie, that's a big call. Yeah, big call. Um, yeah, Luke Keery is one of the elite players in the game, so his contract's probably you know, pretty well taken care of. The, the guy, the base guys that come through that are relying on player match, you know, every time they play a first grade game, they get a bonus, or some of those bonuses being activated. They're the guys, the minimum guys, you're gonna have to try and prop up enough to be able to stay in the game because they have they might have to go back and work full time while this is on to try and make ends meet if they're gonna have to take a pay cut. So it is dire straits at the moment, but I think the NRL has made the right decision. We're gonna go, continue as long as we can. We're not saying that we're not gonna change our mind if something uh, happens in the next five Five minutes in the next 10 minutes but we're going as as well as we can we're going to push through get these games played as long as we can and then hopefully we come out the other side. Michael you almost have to be quite fluid with this situation don't you and you talked about state of origin and trying to plan ahead talking about all those different plans you, you almost have to be prepared for anything don't you? Well the NRL I imagine would be prepared for round two not to go ahead like they, they are going ahead now as if we are behind closed doors but that could change at any minute under advice of the government so you have to have eight, nine, ten contingency plans in place. And one of those plans that we've heard is taking the competition north of the Queensland border into a, you know, a hotter location to try and minimise that risk of spreading the coronavirus. So all precautions at the moment being taken by the NRL, all considerations are on the table. Uh, including moving the competition north of the border. Yeah, the NRL do have a working group on the coronavirus, so they're definitely not spending uh, any time sleeping. They are working around the clock. And we do have our reporter, NRL.com, Zach Bailey, is with Todd Greenberg. Let's take a listen to what he had to say moments ago. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, we all do want an update on the NRL stance regarding coronavirus. So I've gone straight to the top. Todd Greenberg, thanks again for joining us on Inside the NRL. Can you give us an update? since you spoke yesterday? Uh, well, there's not a lot to update other than to say, you know, we're going to continue to play our games in round two, uh, albeit they'll be behind closed doors in closed stadiums. The Warriors have been retained in Australia, which is very important for the competition. Uh, they'll prepare for this game in round two and then we'll reassess with them afterwards. Given how fluid this situation is, do you still expect the footy to go ahead this weekend? A lot of fans are already questioning that. Well, that's our hope and that's our goal, but ultimately some of those decisions may be taken out of our control. Uh, at the moment, not one player from any club has contracted the virus and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that's the case. If that changes, then clearly our decisions will change with it. You mentioned the Warriors since you spoke yesterday. There's been reports that they don't want to stay here in Australia, away from their loved ones back home in New Zealand for any longer than a week. Have they given you that same indication? Yeah, what we've said to the Warriors, and I want to make that really clear, is they've given us an undertaking that they'll stay for the seven days and complete their game in round two. And then the, the undertaking we've given is we'll have another conversation at that point in time. And if they decide that they need to go back to New Zealand, then that's fair enough and we're okay with that. Um, obviously, we'll have that discussion at the right time, but what we have said is let's just take one step at a time uh, one hour at a time, one day at a time. At the moment, they're in Kingscliff, they're enjoying themselves, they're in a camp situation, they'll be preparing for their game on the weekend, and then we'll have a conversation after that. 
With that in mind, though, I guess a lot of Warriors fans who are some of the most passionate in the game are worried about the club's future going forward. Can the NRL continue in 2020 without the Warriors in the competition? Yeah, we can. We've modelled a number of scenarios. If a team goes down with a virus or a number of teams, what can we do to the competition? Will we have to suspend it immediately or can we continue to play? I think the short answer is we're going to try to keep playing rugby league for as long as we can. Uh, we want people to see their rugby league. In times of great crisis and stress for communities, live sport and watching their team play on the weekend might be the final piece to keep people together. So we want to try to do everything we can to keep our industry afloat. The elder statesman in the game, the great Cameron Smith, had his say on the matter as well after Melbourne's match against Manly. He, he thinks the comp should be suspended for two weeks. Do you listen to those sentiments for, from someone who is so highly respected in the game? Of course, absolutely. And everyone's entitled to their view and every decision we make is about the safety and security of our players. And I've spoken to Cameron over the weekend and I'll continue to talk to a number of senior players through the early part of this week. Um, short answer is we're listening to everybody and we're listening to advice and we're taking that advice. But which is moving quickly. It's moved quickly over the weekend. It's moving quickly again this week. And our plans will change as they need to. So Cameron Smith said his teammates are on board with the way he wants to go. Have any other clubs expressed the same message that they want the club, the competition to go on hold immediately? Um, well, the problem with, you know, with putting the competition on hold is when do we come back off hold? Uh, and, and that's a question that nobody can answer. So at the moment, whilst we don't have the virus across any of our players, we're going to keep playing. Um, we're going to keep playing rugby league on the course of a weekend. But as I said, we're realists. So that might change. And if it does, we'll change with it. With your realist hat on, do you feel like it's inevitable, the way it's spread in other countries around the world, that we may have to pause the competition? Look, we might do. Uh, I hope not. My hope is that we play every round and every game and people can watch their rugby league on the weekends. Um, I really hope that's the case. But I'm also conscious of trends around the world and trends currently in this country. Uh, and we might not be that fortunate. But if we're not, that's OK. We'll deal with it. Uh, we'll find a plan and we'll get on with it. And the best thing I can do is communicate to you and others so our fans know exactly what's happening. And at, yesterday at the press conference, uh, Peter Volandis mentioned that the game had commissioned a biosecurity and pandemic expert. Have you had any dialogue with them since? I, I know it's only been a short time since then, but what are they suggesting we do? Yeah, we have. We've uh, written a terms of reference with the commission on that piece of work, and that will start late this afternoon. I don't anticipate it will take more than a couple of days. And ideally, it's just to get the best expertise around some of our current policies and what else we can do. So that works very much underway. And lastly, they're very important to our game, the fans who are worried about the future of this great game. Uh, what's your message to fans of all 16 teams and anyone that loves watching junior footy all the way through to the NRL? Yeah, my, my simple message is this. Uh, try to be patient with us uh, for our fans. You know, we're dealing in extraordinary times. This is um, unprecedented what we're facing as a sport and as a game of rugby league. So for the fans, be patient with us, be patient with your clubs. We're in the middle of trying to develop some communications around those who bought tickets, those with season tickets and memberships. We will make sure that our fans are very, very front of all of our attention, but just be patient with us over the next couple of days. Well, Todd, thank you once again for joining us on short notice. Um, good luck over the next few days. We'll all need it. We'll all take some luck along the way. Thank you. Yeah, handling it like a true CEO, Todd Greenberg there. There's plenty more coming up. We'll go to Kingscliff now where we're joined by the Warriors assistant coach, Tony Iroh. Thanks so much for coming on Inside the NRL. I know it's um, been a strange week for you. Yeah, it has been. Um, no, thanks for having me. But, um, you know, we're in Kingscliff, not a bad part of the world. So uh, that softened the blow a little bit. So, yeah, just looking forward to uh, this week and getting back on the park. Tony, how hard is it to stay focused um, without this coronavirus being a distraction to your team? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's obviously brings its challenges, but I, I imagine those challenges are felt you know, right across the competition, you know, regardless of where you are. Um, you know, the uncertainty that's uh, surrounding the uh, whether you're playing or not or where you're going to be playing, I think it's affecting everyone. So... You know, in that regard, um, you know, we're used to the travel. Uh, obviously, a little bit of different circumstances this time, but, um, you know, we've just got to focus and, and, and get on with the job on Saturday. Um, not where we were expecting to be playing, but um, we also know we'll be up against a side who's, um, you know, going to be committed. So we're just going to have to bring the same attitude and, and, and get on like it's a normal game. Tony, I believe you guys were on the field on the weekend when the, the restrictions were applied, the New Zealand restrictions. What was the, the mood like in the sheds after the game and how did that change from you know, directly after full time to where they are now? Yeah, I think, um, I think actually some of the boys got a little bit of a win before the, 
before the game, uh, nothing obviously had been um, uh, guaranteed uh, through the government. But I, I know there was a little bit of concern. Um, you know, that was no excuse for uh, our performance on the weekend. But um, certainly after the game, uh, football wasn't really a focus. Uh, there was just that uh, concern about, you know, uh, the boys and their families and uh, you know, if we were going back home, would we be playing again? And, and uh, if we weren't, how long were we going to be here? So we've still got those challenges around us. Um, but as I said, you know, we've just got to, you know, try and put that away and out, out of our heads and, and focus on, on, on the next week. So it's a good test for uh, us as staff and also as the players in terms of, you know, just focusing one game at a time and one weekend at a time, albeit with... Um, you know, as I said, some uh, different circumstances around uh, around Australia and New Zealand. Tony, do you feel like it could be a bit of a blessing in disguise having put in that performance on the weekend that you are together as one uh, against you know the odds playing this week? But being in camp, I always found as a player it was a little bit easier after a bad performance to really narrow the focus. Yeah, I think um, you know we we're used to we're used to the travel, and uh, during a season, you know, we would uh, generally stay over for a full week between games if there was a short turnaround. So this isn't uh, foreign to us. Um, obviously, the circumstances are a little bit different and, and the boys haven't got many clothes on them. But, um, no, we are you know we are a side that um, spends a lot of time together and we have been in camp uh, during the season. So uh, in that regard, it is, it, it is uh, very familiar to us. So um, I think we'll probably handle a lot better than other teams would have to. And we're going to have to, as you, as you said, the performance on, on Saturday wasn't acceptable. Um, there were some good things, but there was also some areas that we know we need to improve on, especially against a side like the Raiders. So um, we're looking forward to that challenge. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting walking out to an empty stadium on the weekend, but, uh, you know, all sides are going to have to do it and, and just get on with it. So, um, yeah, we want to make sure we, we're better this week and, um, you know, through the challenging circumstances, we've just got to get through it. Tony, you mentioned playing in front of an empty stadium, uh, the Warriors and the Raiders, but I need to ask this week, what lengths is the club going to to uh, make sure nobody can catch uh, coronavirus? I mean, um, are you running out of uh, equipment? Are you keeping the players in separate rooms? What's happening? Yeah, the players have got their own rooms, um, but really, you know, I mean, we're together in our team room and, and in team meetings. Um, we haven't been isolated from the other guests um, in, the, in the hotel, so effectively it's business as usual. Um, you know, we've, we've even even before the swing we came away, you know, we're, we're covered head to toe and steriliser anyway. Um, you know, there's no guarantee we won't get it, uh, but just all the necessary precautions about hygiene and, and uh, cleanliness. So um, just like I imagine uh, most people in Australia are, are, are treating themselves in terms of, uh, like, you know, trying to trying to minimise the risk. So, um, yeah, no no real different. Um, obviously, if the boys, you know, we had one, one player feeling a little bit under the weather uh, today, so he, he stayed inside his room and he's been checked by the doctors and so far so good. But these are the precautions you've just got, you've just got to take, just like uh, anyone else at the, at the moment, given given what the pandemic uh, can bring can bring to the bring to the place. Tony, would the Warriors begrudge the NRL at all if... They continue this competition without you guys. If you decided to go home, would that be? Yeah, would you guys look down on the NRL for continuing without you guys? Oh, I don't think so, mate. I think um, given the circumstances, um, you know, and, and given the, the the financial difficulties that the code might find itself in, I, I think you know everyone's got to be realistic in terms of um, you know what 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 you need to do and what you what you can't do. And, and for us, you know, we've obviously got issues with with families back in, in New Zealand. So the players are, uh, are affected by that. But uh, certainly for the for the code and the game overall, um, I think, you know, everyone has an understanding that, um, you know, it's pretty vital that, you know, they try and play as much football as they can, as long as it's safe for everyone. So um, I don't think, you know, I don't think anyone here would begrudge that. Uh, the code's got to do what's good for the code. Uh, and we'll, we'll just um, hope, hopefully be involved for a bit longer yet and hopefully get through this through this, through this this rough patch. It really is a day-to-day -day situation. Thank you so much, Tony, for joining us. We'll let you prepare for your match against the Raiders on Friday at Seabus Super Stadium. A bit different to Eden Park or um, Mount Smart Stadium, but thank you so much. 
No, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. Tony Iro, the New Zealand Warriors assistant coach there. But let's head over to Auckland because, yes, the players are dealing with the coronavirus and uh, staying away from families. And one wife that we're speaking to, Jess Blair, thanks for coming on Inside the NRL. Oh, that's all right. No worries. Thanks for having me. Now, it's been a hectic week. Um, and like I mentioned, it's not just the players going through this, but how are the families coming together in, in such a time? Uh, I think, like, originally on Saturday, we were all quite shocked. You know, we kind of were watching the news and, like, during the game. So, um, you know, we were all quite shocked with that. But obviously, this week, it's actually been amazing. Like, I cannot, like... Uh, you know, Cam George from the Warriors and everyone from the Warriors has just banded together. Like, I've been literally been inundated on my phone um, yeah. from everyone at the Warriors and even just the New Zealand community just asking if they can help, yeah. you know, with, with whatever. Hey, Tiger. And, uh, <laughs> and the kids as well. So, um, honestly, sorry. I love this. No, it's great. It's okay. At least someone's smiling. Uh, yeah, but honestly, like, I, the Warriors have just offered, you know, to help with the kids, um, babysitting, you know, obviously with with, um, you know, we've all got uni and things like that on that kind of throws a spanner in the works with the boys being away. Um, but they've literally just been so amazing. So we just feel so, so supported and so lucky to be part of this amazing New Zealand community here. So I do feel, um, yeah, really, really grateful for that. Jess, what was the conversation like with Adam after the game? I know a couple of the boys have come back for family reasons. What did you say to him and how hard was it to talk to him after the game about what lies ahead the next few weeks? Oh, I think I just had no idea. Obviously, when we were looking at it on TV, they were like, you know, the Warriors might stay six or 12 weeks. And I was just kind of like, are you kidding? Like, this is crazy. But uh, obviously, during the week and, um, you know, things have settled down. And I guess, you know, now the bigger picture, obviously, it's not, you know, we're just waiting on, you know, even the government. Do you know what I mean? It's literally out of everyone's hands. So I think kind of moved on from Saturday and the boys are just, you know, trying to focus on the game. Um, you know, being in Kingscliff together, I think it's really good for them. And obviously us girls, it's, um, you know, kind of brought us closer. It's been, it, yeah, been good this week. But, um, you know, of course it's hard. It's hard for anyone that's away from their husband, no matter what, especially when it's, you know, they were meant to come home on Sunday. Do you know what I mean? But I think a lot of people are a lot worse off than us. So I don't want to, um, you know, just in this is affecting everyone in the world. So, um you know, we're just a little minority of that, I guess. Jess, was there, I mean, there's a little bit of talk around possibly the families coming over to Australia before that travel ban, of course. W would you guys have been open to that? And were the other wives available to possibly come over and spend time if the Warriors have to stay over here an extended time period? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely come. I would, you know, obviously have to speak to my uni and obviously if they put, um, you know, they close the schools and things like that here, it will make it even more difficult for us to stay. But yeah, I think, you know, who doesn't love Kingscliff? So if they were there, I'm like, I'm sure we would all go. But, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, all the girls want to see their, you know, their husbands and the kids want to see their dad, their dads. So, yeah, definitely open to that, absolutely. But um, I guess we just don't know. That's, uh, you know, we just actually don't know what's going on. Hopefully, you know, the travel ban can get lifted and everyone's safe and happy, I guess. When you say you don't know, that, that's the common thread, isn't it, with this whole situation? And I think there's nobody that has an answer yet, and that's probably the frustrating part. But we did, um, we sort of got word from your tweet when you were reaching out thinking, no way, like you cannot be separated from Adam uh, with your schedule. And then since then, you've, you've even spoken about the support you've had from the community and, and the club, which is beautiful to see when uh, hard times, the communities do reach out and bring each other together and help each other out. So. Um, um, I guess good luck with the rest of the week. And I know this morning you had a trip to hospital with uh, one of your children. So what a week it has been for you. I know, <laughs> that was crazy. But yeah, I just want to reiterate how amazing the Warriors have been. Like, I, I really hope the boys get the support from the Australian public like we have here because they've just banded around us as the girls. So I really hope that, you know, everyone in Australia just, it's hard for the boys being away from us. So I just hope that, you know, everyone in the greater community gets around them and maybe, you know, the Warriors can be their second team as well. Yeah, I hope they do too. And it's great to see you being patient. I'm sure it would have been overwhelming on the weekend, but thanks so much for your time. We will let you get back to being a mother and a uni student and full-time worker. Uh, we'll talk Thank to you, you so soon, much. Jess. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye. Well, he was the man of the moment last week and there was a lot of media attention around him. But Bronson Sherry, thank you so much for joining us. Now, uh, we've got to clear the news up. You do not have coronavirus. How are you feeling? <laughs> 
I'm feeling good. Um, obviously, it was a big scare. Um, good news that it came back negative, so it was a massive relief. So, uh, but feeling good at the moment. Bronson, at what point did you think it was the right move to go talk to the club about you know, potential symptoms and the fact that this may be coronavirus and they went and got a swab test to check if you were OK? When did you realise that you should be doing that? Well, I was, I was in bed and like I had a really bad temperature and everything was just like... Oh, I just couldn't really get out of bed and I just knew I had to just tell the doctor because I had training the next day. So I said, let's just tell the doctor and see what he says. So... um. I told the doctor and then he um, he just thought, he just knew, you know, we didn't want to take the risk. So when he said to go um, take the test, I was just like, oh, really, doc? Like, do I, do I really have to? I tried to get, I tried to avoid it, but um, <laughs> obviously I had to do it um, for the boys and, and for the NRL. So, um, yeah, just thank. Thank God it came back negative. <laughs> Bronson, how was the mood when you went back to training from the boys? And, and what precautions have you had to take to make sure that you didn't pass on the flu or, or whatever you uh, whatever you were suffering from? Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't really seen the boys yet. Um, I, I went in today just to do a bit of weights, and um, and that was just um, a few a few of them. So I wasn't the whole squad. So I think you know from this, I think all the boys will um, obviously look after themselves much more now and um, I think maybe there's, there won't be any handshakes or whatnot getting around so I think everyone's <laughs> just going to wash their hands and and do the best they can. <laughs> plenty of hand sanitizer and plenty of back pats I'm told but it's such a relief for you Bronson and it's good to see you smiling. I know that there was a lot of media attention so we don't want to see you uh, anxious and I guess overwhelmed but just quickly I guess to change it up and talk about your shoulder. How are you feeling? Are you expecting to be back in round two? Yeah, shoulder's feeling good. Um, I'm expecting to play this weekend. I just got to do um, one last testing for my shoulder. So that kind of determines if I'm going to be playing or not. So um, that's going to be done during the week. Um, everything else is on track. So, you know, just depending on that test, which hopefully, fingers crossed, it, it comes back good. So um, I want to be on that field playing again because I miss it. So... Um, I should should know early this week. OK, well, fingers crossed and good luck for that test. Uh, sh I'm sure the Sharks would love to have you out there on Saturday against the Melbourne Storm, but we'll let you get going. We'll let you do your rehab and uh, practice your training. Thank you so much for coming on Inside the NRL. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Yeah, it's great to see you. Now, we need to head down to Wollongong. Tanisha Stanton is joined with James Graham. I'm here with St George Illawarra Dragons enforcer James Graham. Now James, we've seen Cameron Smith and Michael Morgan be very vocal about what they think in terms of suspending the season. Where do you stand on that? Oh look, um, I'm not a doctor. Um, look, I'm only getting bits of media and stuff like that, but I think you've got to, got to trust the powers, um, powers of the game and the people that run the game that they're not going to put us in any danger. Um, I think that, you know, you know, players love playing, um, so if, if there's a possibility um, without putting anyone at any too much risk, then um, I don't see why we, we shouldn't play. You know, we've got. Um, I appreciate a lot of sports being suspended, but you know, there's um, a huge marketplace there for, for our game to to get out there to the world. I know speaking to people back home, they they're starved of their sport. So um, if we can if we can get it on, we can maybe turn it into a positive. Happy with the NRL? How the NRL are dealing with it? Uh, yeah, look, I don't envy their position and having to, to deal with all this. Um, you know, it's, I imagine it's very difficult for them to, to please everyone and no doubt they're going to be criticised and or praised for, for how this all pans out. But, um, yeah, happy to, happy to continue playing and, and follow their guidelines, really. Well, we're heading north to Brisbane and Broncos skipper Alex Glenn joins us. Alex, uh, thanks for your time. Now, it's been a strange week. You haven't played any rugby league in 2020 yet, recovering from that hamstring injury. But this whole coronavirus um, pandemic, how I guess, how's the club dealing with it? Yeah, the club's been really good, to be honest. Um, I guess it's it's one of those things we, we don't know how to deal with it until, you know, every every morning it's a different day and um, something else might might come along. But at the moment, our club's been really good. Um, I think next week we're, we're oh, 
tomorrow we're locking down as a, as a team and a unit that we're not allowed to go and see any of the other staff upstairs uh, from the corporates and that. So that's that's the the I guess us progressing forward and trying to I guess keep our, ourselves contained and um, not let the virus spread. I guess. Alex, have we made the right decision as a game? Are we making the right call to continue playing, even if it is behind closed doors? Yeah, uh, to, to be honest, I think so. Um, you know, I know it's it's hard, even as from a player's aspect. You know, all we, we want to play in front of the crowds. It's, it's um, we're entertainers, man, and we want to entertain the fans. But at the end of the day, you know, everyone can still watch from from home. And I know it is a hard decision to make but um, you know we want to continue playing the footy we want to still give everyone um, you know football to watch at home so um, it is, and from the players aspect that is hard to, to play in front of no crowds but at the end of the day um, the sport's got to try and continue and um, you know like I said we've got to take it each week as it comes and whether or not the sport continues for the rest of the season we'll, we'll soon see but it's going to be interesting this weekend Alex, you are possibly returning this week from a hamstring injury. How proud of you of the young guys last week going into that hostile environment up in North Queensland and playing the way they did? Yeah, Jamie, it was very, um, um, I guess, all the hard work that we put in the preseason. Um, we could see it coming forward and um, we got we reaped the rewards, I guess. And, you know, I, I thought our, our young boys, um, you know, Paddy Carrigan and, and Flegler, they, they laid the foundation. Um, you know, losing Matt Lodge um, a couple of weeks ago was, was hard for our pack. And I thought those boys really stepped up, uh, especially going up against a pack like that who are very, um, very skilled and experienced. I thought our boys really stepped up and, and set up our season um, really well with like I was saying, I'm, I'm not sure where the season will go, um, you know, later on in the year. But um, I thought our boys really everything that we worked on throughout the year um, or in preseason, the boys just went out there and nailed their job. And the the most rewarding thing is to see our boys turn up for each other and play as a team. And I think that's what we lacked last year. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned Matt Lodge missing there. Another one most recently, Jack Bird. How is he doing mentally? Yeah, it's very hard for Jack. Um, I seen him this morning, and um, I think he's he's going to head down to Sydney and, and see um, his surgeon down there. But um, it's very tough for him. I know it's it's burning because all he wanted to do was come out and play some great footy for you know Brisbane and, and the fans. And you know, since he's come up here, you know, the last two years, three years, he's been ruled out with injuries. And you know, his football to him is everything. Um, and so when he's not playing footy, he's a bit down, down in the dump. So I rang him after the game, um, after the boys got that win in, in Townsville. And you could tell he was pumped for the boys. But deep down, I know he wanted to be out there with the fellas as well. So just trying to be around him as much as we can off field. Alex, let me take you back to the end of last year, mate. The last time you guys played South Sydney. And after the game, I imagine you all saw the scenes in the South Sydney dressing room with Wayne Bennett dancing and the boys carrying on. You know, on a serious note, how did that make you guys feel seeing that? Did it sort of light a little fire in the belly seeing South Sydney act the way they did? Yeah, I guess. I guess it does hurt, um, you know, when you see that. But to be honest, man, that's football. At the end of the day, there's going to be one winner and one loser. Um, you know, seeing Wayne celebrate with his team, that's, that's just how it is. But deep down inside, it, it still hurts you a bit when you um, when you lose a game and then you see the, the opposition celebrating like that, especially at our home fort against, Sun, um, you know, at Suncorp. It does burn a little bit, but at the end of the day, there's always going to be one winner and one loser. And I guess, um, you know, the cows would have been feeling the same when we were celebrating in, in their, their new stadium last week, so... It's, it's just life, man. It's football. It's how it is. Alex, Tavita Pengai Jr. is going to spend some time on the sideline, uh, again suspended. Do you feel like the club or, or yourself, the leadership group, just has to... Do you want him to change his game so he's out on the field or do you want him to just tread that line a little bit more in terms of his aggression? I mean, are you going to have a chat to him because he's such an influential player for you guys but he's missed a lot of time for you the last two seasons? Yeah, I think, you know, with Tavita, that's, that's um, a part of his game. I know maybe he could be a little bit smart on, you know, how he, um, you know, goes into tackles and that. But to be honest, I don't want him to change that aggressiveness because, you know, when he's when he's aggressive on the field, that's when he's playing at his best. And, yeah, he's lost a lot of lot of time off the field. And 
like you said, Jamie, there's a fine line between, you know, getting charged with, with an offence or, you know, letting play carry on as it is. So, um, you know, we just got to be, you know, I'll, I'll have a word to Tavita about just being a little bit smart on the field and choosing your times and obviously not staying away from the head. But, you know, I don't want him to change too much from his game because, you know, he is that enforcer for our team. And, um, you know, we all can see what he's done in the, in the past on the field to, um, you know, tough opposition. Man, when he's on his game, he is strong, he is powerful, and he's got that offload. So I don't want him to change too much, to be honest. But it's about being a little bit smarter so he can stay on the field for our team because, you know, the last thing we want you know, going into the competition is to have him on the sidelines when he brings so much for our team. Yeah, well, he'll miss uh, the next four weeks. And, Alex, I guess it'd be a timely return if you make it back on Friday night. But we won't hold you up. Thanks so much for coming on Inside the NRL and good luck against our Sydney. No, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully we can, you know, get some games throughout the whole year. Sounds good. Well, let's turn our attention to the South Sydney Rabbitohs camp. Damien Cook joins us. Damien, does it feel bizarre that from here on in you'll be playing your games in front of no crowds? Yeah, it is a bit bizarre that we're moving forward that, you know, we will be playing our, our games behind closed doors. But I think the best thing for the fans is now that they're not allowed to, to attend the games, the best next step is to make sure we continue to play and, and uh, you know, they'll still be able to watch us on TV. Damien, after the drama last year at Suncorp and seeing Wayne Bennett dance around the sheds, everyone earmarked this game as one they wanted to watch. Now, we're not going to have a crowd there, but do you think the, the, uh, the, the spice will still be in that game given... You've already had a year against Anthony Seabold and Wayne's played against or coached against his old club. Yeah, I think that we're still going to have that rivalry moving forward for the next few years anyway, especially while these two coaches are, are going against each other, which is great for the game. I remember last year there was a bit of hype behind behind the game between the, the two coaches and assistant coaches having some comments and it sort of you know built the game up a bit and gave it a good good atmosphere. So I'm hoping that still has that bit of vibe going up there. You know, obviously Suncorp's a great stadium to play in. Uh, in front of a great crowd, but it's going to be a completely different experience next week uh, with no one there. Cookie, yesterday Cameron Smith was pretty strong in his words about the competition should stop. What's the feeling with you personally having a, a young child uh, at home, but also within the team? Do you guys feel like that you, the game should go on and we're making the right decision and then we assess day by day, or are you on the Cameron Smith uh, sort of stance where the competition should stop? Yeah, I understand why the NRL want the game to continue. Uh, obviously, you know, you know, don't have the funds like the other sports in the America to, to just stop playing for a period of time. So I understand that. But I do believe they do have the best interests at heart for the players and, and looking after their health. And, you know, for, for myself and my young family, a lot of other players out there as well, uh, there's different scenarios that we been chucked up about, obviously moving all the players away to a certain area. But I think it's quite a difficult time to do that. Uh, you know, it'd be hard for me, you know, personally to leave my little four-month-old daughter behind, especially, uh, you know, with what's going on at the moment and, and expect my, my wife to, to do everything, even though she does a lot for me for her now. But, uh, you know, I'd like to be here and supporting her as much as I can. It's a really difficult situation, Damien, and I guess the NRL are, are going to take some advice off the government and just, uh, you can't even... Uh, prepare for what's happening in the next round like we can take round two now and say it's going ahead in closed stadiums but for you even your coach Wayne Bennett he um, suggested taking the game north where uh, it's been reported that there's less cases of coronavirus because of the warmer weather he mentioned Perth, Darwin, Townsville is that something that uh, you would consider despite I know that you've got your daughter Willow at home but do you have to be that uh, extreme and look at those options? I think Wayne's personally just trying his best to get north of the border again. Uh, he's, a, he's a Queenslander at heart. He loves the warmer conditions and it's about to get nice and cold down here for, for Uncle Wayne. And he's, um, he's obviously getting on in his years as well. So, uh, But, you know, for me personally, that's what we have to do for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I, you know, I understand that's what has to be done to keep the game going. And, you know, I'll, I'll fully support that. But if they go and do that, I think, you know, two to max three weeks is all they can do. Uh, I don't think you can be taking the players away from their, their families. Uh, some families are, you know, isolated, don't have other family support around them as well. So we can't be taken, you know, taken away from our families for too long. And, you know, they're going to do that a couple of weeks, Max. Uh, Damien, how has Wayne been? You mentioned him. He doesn't you know, strike me as a guy with a sanitizer in his man bag carrying it around. Has he said much to you guys about 
you know, how to handle this, what the, the club should be doing. And, and as you said, he is getting on in age. And Cameron Smith mentioned Craig Bellamy was 60-odd yesterday. And Wayne's in his 70s. Has he had any concerns at all about what this means for him and the club? I think Wayne's probably the safest bloke out there in the moment because he doesn't <laughs> shake anyone's hands. So, um, you know, he keeps his hands in his pocket and I think everyone in Australia would probably take that tip out of Wayne's book and, and just not shake anyone's hands. So, you know, he's, uh, tomorrow we've actually got a meeting called, uh, you know, in the morning and the doctor and the and the head of, perform, uh, head of performance and Ch- I think Shane Richardson the world, they're going to update all the players at South Sydney of what's going on and, and they're probably going to give us some tips there tomorrow as well just to... To how to look after ourselves as best as we can moving forward, and uh, you know, like you know, we've all been talking about, it's, they're taking it day by day. It's changing every day, so um, they're doing the best they can, and I think that's you know, that's all we can do at the moment too. Is just take it each day by day, and that's all the players are doing at the moment. We're sort of just waiting to see what happens and and go from there. How are you guys preparing for the atmosphere? Because it is a big game, probably the game of the round, playing against the Broncos. How are you guys going to be preparing for? No, no fans there. No one to boo you when you run out, but also when you get that momentum, uh, no one to cheer you on. Well, you played alongside me with the Cutters a couple of times. There. <laughs> I was um, going to say, so, I played so, plenty of reserve grade, mate. It wouldn't bother so, me so, at all. So we understand what it's like. So I think <laughs> you know, I'm probably one of the most experienced up there, I think, with the players out there playing no crowds. So, uh, But look, it will be different. You know, there's some teams that, you know, love the home ground advantage and having that home crowd there. And uh, to be fair, Brisbane are probably one of those teams that, you know, have a very hostile crowd. So uh, it's obviously going to be a first for everyone. Uh, you know, we're going up there against Brisbane and normally a, a crowd you enjoy playing behind and uh, in front of and a team that really gets behind Brisbane, they're going to have to, to do it without them this weekend. Yeah, it'll be a great game, crowd or no crowd. I just have one more question to ask you just with Corona. Uh, has your club gone into lockdown yet or are you still training at the club? Uh, but I think that's what the meetings tomorrow is about. They're going to just update us uh, where we're going to move forward with this and what the next steps to take and, and how best to, to take care of ourselves. So after tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow morning's meeting, we're going to have a better idea of where we are as a club and, and where we're going to go from there. OK, well, Damien, we'll let you continue your preparations for the game against the Brisbane Broncos. We do appreciate you joining us on Inside the NRL and make sure you stay safe and stay healthy. Will do. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Damien Cook there. We do have Moses Embai on standby. But first, just in some breaking news, gents, uh, round two match between the Roosters and Manly has been moved now from Central Coast Stadium to now Leichhardt Oval. What's your thoughts on that? Well, if that's the right decision by the NRL, they're in charge of it. I think having more games in less arenas, probably less chance of it spreading. But again, we don't know how this is all going to affect tomorrow and the next day. It may not even happen. So uh, that'll be played on Saturday night. And then Sunday is uh, Knights v Tigers, so yeah. I think it's good. I think logistically it works better for the NRL as well because that may save quite a bit of money moving around, having you know games all over the state, all over the country. If you have them, it helps the broadcast. Well, especially too. if the Sydney games, you maybe play out of one or two venues, but do you increase the likelihood of spreading it though if everyone's in one place? So who knows? It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? We are joined by Moses M. by now, and he is, uh, well, he won't be playing, but his team will be playing at Leichhardt Oval on the Sunday against the Knights. Moses, it's all a bit uh, surreal, isn't it, this whole week, the last 48 hours? Yeah, it's been a, um, oh, it's uncharted waters, isn't it? It's been a weird couple of weeks around the coronavirus, and, um, you know, we obviously don't know what's going to go on uh, going forward, so just see what happens. Moses, a few players are worried about pay going forward and if the broadcasters haven't got games then the game won't get the money to pay the players obviously mate you're well paid but some of the guys in your club that you know Thanks, on <laughs> on minimum wage or just you know just over a hundred thousand and only income in their families are they concerned at all about what this means for them going forward yeah they certainly are obviously um as you mentioned the the the, the, the majority of the income comes from the broadcasting rights and if the broadcasters don't have a product i guess they're not going to be paying are they so uh, look, you can see where they're coming from, but yeah, I guess that's that's why the NRL is working so diligently to keep the game running and keep the keep the show going on. Because, uh, like you mentioned, there's there's people's livelihoods on the line and, uh, and income, you know, to to pay for not only themselves but their families and, and mortgages. And I know in the big picture, you know, we're we're pretty privileged to do what we do, and there's a lot more bigger issues going on and a lot uh, more people less, you know, less privileged. But uh, you know, we we got we do have to. I guess look after ourselves as well. Moses, what's the feeling inside the West Tigers sheds? Uh, as a group, are you guys happy to still be playing in front of no crowds and the NRL competition to keep going? 
Yeah, we, we are, Sally. I think um, I think we need to be, uh, I guess, to exercise a level of, I guess, caution to, you know, to keep this virus out because, as mentioned, if the game stops, so does our, so does our incomes. And, um, you know, it's not just us, but the finance across the whole game. It's a, it's a massive dent in the game. So, um, you know, as, as you know, so we, 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 we want to play for you. The, the vibe around the club's been excellent. It's been very positive and um, everyone's optimistic that it can go on. We just got to exercise the right measures and, and be diligent around our hygiene and things like that and just do the best we can because uh, statistically it's it's not too bad. There's only, what, 200, under 200 cases in New South Wales. Uh, when you're talking 5 million people, it's not too bad. Yeah, it is absolutely huge news, especially in our game. But let's get to some footy chat, Moses. How are you recovering from that knee injury and when can we see you back? Yeah, it's going really well. Um, probably probably looking at round, round three to four, I think. So um, it's going well, getting through my rehab and uh, we got started running today, actually. So And that, that, that worked well for me and looking forward to getting back out on the pitch. Moses, what did it mean to you as a close friend of Josh Reynolds on the weekend to see him get out there after the summer he's had, after the few years he's had really with his body as well, uh, to see him get out there on the weekend? What did, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was excellent. It was um, yeah, everyone, who's, everyone who knows Josh's story and uh, what he's been through and everyone close to him knows what sort of guy he is and you just want uh, to see people like that succeed and he's worked extremely hard uh, through, I guess, a tumultuous couple of years uh, on field and off field with injury and and then obviously he's off field dramas, but uh, you know he, he finally got rewarded for all the hard work he's put in, and uh, everyone was everyone was stoked to see him out there running around and smiling his face. I think um, I think Tarek got him a couple of times there, which is <laughs> good to see. Him. Uh, but it's good to see him back. You know he's up to his old ways. He's been a pest and. Uh, that's what we like to see in him. <laughs> so good to see. And obviously we're hoping that Luke Brooks will come back sooner rather than later with that calf injury. I think he's looking at a month out. But thanks so much for your time, Moses. And, of course, good luck for the West Tigers against the Knights on Sunday at Leichhardt Oval. Too easy. Thanks, guys. Power rankings after round one. I was a bit harsh on a few teams. One of those was the Canterbury Bulldogs. I thought their form with the ball after a full pre-season was disappointing in the opening round of the NRL. Another team at home was the Manly Seagulls. Their form against the Melbourne Storm, Michael Chambers, wasn't up to scratch for a team in such a great rivalry. To be able to put that performance out there wasn't good enough for me. A little bit harsh, I think, on the Seagulls. Those conditions didn't suit the likes of Tom Trebojevic and Daly Cherry Evans, and it suited Melbourne. They got into a wrestle, and that's what they love to do. So... I think Manly are a good team and I don't think they deserve to drop that far, but they are your power rankings. Yeah, I was harsh on a lot of teams, to be honest. Moving them up and down, I thought after round one, the uncertainty of what's going on in the NRL, I had to go off what we'd seen and the pre-season rankings, of course. Another team that made a move up the ladder was the West Tigers. Vintage performance from Benji Marshall last night to steer the Tigers in an important win over the St George Illawarra Dragons. Make sure you go to nrl.com every Monday for my power rankings. And as we heard moments ago, it's a huge blow. Luke Brooks facing a month on the sidelines with that calf injury. Moses Embai also not expected to come back until next month. But Dale Finucane from the Melbourne Storm ca copped a nasty head knock in their win over Manly. He did pass his HIA test um, and he's good to play on Saturday. As for the Sydney Roosters, there are a few men out of action. That replay just there too. That's <laughs> nasty, isn't it, gents? Um, as for the Sydney Roosters, though, they've got a few on the bench. Uh, Angus Crichton recovering from pneumonia. He's expected to be back this week. Boyd Cordner might have another week off. Um, and Satili Tupanua is awaiting results after scans on his knee. That is this week's casualty ward, uh, thanks to Chemist Warehouse. All right. I think now we just need to talk about some rugby league, gents. Before we wrap <laughs> things up, um, I know it has been corona heavy, but it has to be. It's, it's the biggest talking point in our game at the moment and the world. But in terms of good footy from the weekend, Jamie, what did you like? Yeah, I like the look of the Cowboys Stadium. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. Uh, watching that rivalry against the Broncos always is something special. But the scenes, yeah, the way that they, they did it up there, I, I'm envious of not being able to play up there. Uh, in that new stadium and, and, and at Bank West. I think we're going to see over the next five, six, seven years as the game continues. They're running out, they're doing it a bit NFL style, so I love that. 
And what about for you, Michael? The return of Valentine Holmes, did you like to see that? I did. He, he, he was a bit shaky at fullback, uh, like he was a few years ago when he made the move. And then we saw at the back end of the year, he stormed home and was probably the best player in the competition that year in his last year in the NRL. So he'll find his feet as a good player. What was your favourite part about round one? Uh, look, I liked, I liked the way... The captain's challenge is going to be controversial. I don't like the way the players used it, but I like the way that it's going to change the emphasis on the referees. It's going to be on the players. Now, we saw that on Thursday night, the way the Eels and the Bulldogs used it. If they, if Parramatta lost that game because of refereeing Howler at the end, we would have been blaming Parramatta for wasting their review. We wouldn't have been blaming the referees, and I think that's a good thing for the game because the onus is now on the players to make sure they don't get to the end of the games and have a decision cost them the game. Uh, and I think that's only good for, the, for rugby league. Michael? I mean, Jamie? Yeah, I'm still not sold on the captain's challenge. I mean, there was a call. They're going to review everything in the in goal. The, the, the one for me was where Gutherson comes through and they call a knock-on against DWZ. And then all of a sudden they check it in the bunker and it goes back and reverses that. So I would rather them stick with the decision. I, I just think it's going to... Teams will work it out quickly, you know, yeah. how to take advantage of that, and we're st they're still working that out at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And now I did already get the hint of where you're headed for what you didn't like in round one. To be a Pangai Jr., tell me why you're not happy with his technique. Yeah, I, I love watching him play. I think he's one of the most destructive players in the competition on his day, but stuff like this he just doesn't have to do. He, he's, you, you think about the, that forward pack for Brisbane with, with Carrigan and Flegler and all those guys, and then you've got these two dynamic powerhouses on an edge in Tavita Pengai Jr. and David Fafita. That's a pack that could help get you a long way to winning the competition. And this, he's been suspended last year for a lot, of, a lot of periods. I think it was eight weeks total. Four weeks to start in 2020. Now, if the competition goes ahead as normal, as we all hope it does, that's a huge loss on, on that right edge because he's so intimidating. What I didn't like, I didn't like what happened on, on the eve of the season, Jack Bird's knee injury. Uh, it's heartbreaking for him after the year, well, two years he's had, really. So to see him now miss another season with an ACL, uh, you've you got to feel for Jack Bird after what he's been through. I feel like there's quite a, a handful of players who are going through that, but you're right, say since that, he moved yeah, north. Jack Bird, Cameron King, yeah, those guys, to do a full pre-season, for the fans just to take an insight, you train your whole pre-season to get ready for that mm. round one game. And to do an ACL, it's tw it's not just 12 months, it's it's life scarring, that, that may be career ending. So uh, hopefully those guys have a speedy recovery. Yeah, all right, thanks so much for joining me again. Gents, once again, you're lifting, leading me the way. Uh, all right, well, I will be back tomorrow for NRL teams uh, hosting with Brett Kamali and Robbie Farah, but make sure you tune in again next Monday at 5 p.m. Jamie Soward, Michael Chamis and myself will be back at the desk. Have a good one.